Hey guys, I, I'm the guests are already on. We're just we're here already. We've been hanging out, and I thought I don't need to take them off and then put them back on. We're just gonna we're just gonna drink some scotch. So I'm gonna say hi to a couple people real quick, and then we're just gonna get into it. We're gonna DC be tortured. Soon. Yeah. Well, no, hopefully not. But <laughs> we got Nate over at Boba Bourbon Scotch Face incoming. We got Donner Pass Whiskey. I did not send them Ardbeg 10, you guys. Spoiler alert. We got The Whack, Jerry Black, Sugar Kitty, John Delicacy. We're just we're just running through them. We got The Mac. The Whack and The Mac are in. Who else is in? Return of The Mac. Adriana is in. Just being a legend. Okay, guys. Oh, my gosh. We got Eric Waite Whiskey Studies. Bourbon drinkers trying scotch. Are they man enough? They, I think they are. Will any of them survive? Hopefully, because these are three of my favorite people in the universe. You better not kill me. Is, okay, Hopefully you said not. there's no Ardbeg, so that's a good sign. We're already <laughs> off the right start. So, and I'll tell you guys a little bit about that in a second. But there is no, there's no Isla scotches in here. So, you don't have to worry about that. We literally haven't even started, and people are questioning my manhood already. <laughs> I see how this is going to be. Oh, gosh. So we got Bruno Martins in from Portugal. We got Mr. Whiskey Shits. Amy Boom is in. Okay, guys. I'm so excited to have you on. Thank you guys for, for hanging out. If you guys want to, if people don't know, oh, I got to take Amy Boom's thing off the chat real quick. Uh, if you guys just want to say who you are and what your channels are and all that jazz, if people don't know, which they probably do, go for it. Chris? Uh, my name is Hot Buttery Rolls, and I'm the host of a show called uh, Cooking with Cats. And uh, <laughs> I cook with my friends that are cats, not using cats for cooking. Uh, that's, that's obviously not true. Uh, my name's Chris. I've got a whiskey show called Hot Buttery Rolls. We go live Saturday nights at 9 Central Standard Time, and uh, I'm going to try to behave because it's before dark. He's going to be singing by the end of the night, guys, so <sighs> just get ready. Maybe. I'm, I'm ready for it. Serenade me. <laughs> With arms wide open. <laughs> I feel it. If you guys didn't see Jason's Jason's awesome chat, you yeah, you don't know what we're talking about, but you you need to go rewatch it. <laughs> or, <laughs> and hear me out, Yes. you don't. <laughs> or you don't. I no, thought it was definitely great. go. <laughs> it was pretty awesome. So, Klein. So, where do people find you, Klein? Uh, generally, face down in a gutter. <laughs> um, out, outside of that, uh, you can go to YouTube on Destination Bourbon. So uh, we, uh, yeah, right there. Where DC's posting in the link is DC is the man. The man. Um, we do a little uh, show on Sunday nights, nine o'clock Eastern. Um, Carrie joins me, and she does cocktails because my my uh, my better half does not like drinking bourbon straight, so she makes cocktails, and so we have a little show with debauchery and cocktails. Works out pretty well. There we go. There we go. It's the pretty awesome if you guys thing. haven't seen it. Yeah. And then what about you, Trev? I'm Trev. The wrench. The wrench. And you can find me via that link that DC will post. DC. No, he's you, not you, yeah, he's, he's, he's That'd awesome. be so funny if you didn't. Oh, it'd be great if you didn't. He plugs everyone else. <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be great if you posted uh, Find Trev here and then posted one of our links, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Just anybody else's. No. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So, okay. So I've got some scotches. I hand delivered you guys some scotches. And basically what we're doing, if you guys want to ask me any questions throughout the stream, uh, you can. These are all blind samples, uh, but it's not a big deal if you know what they are because it probably doesn't mean a whole heck of a lot to you guys. Um, but yeah, we're drinking three different styles. I'm going to try to, oh, do you have a question, Klein? Yes. I, I do. Go ahead. Uh, why? <laughs> <laughs> because it's not just good. Okay. Okay, DC. Right. DC has has the link. He's not. I feel that. like that's not the link to my channel. It, it probably is. <laughs> I, I'm not going to click on it because I don't know what it is. Okay, so I'm going to try to click on this and see if this pulls up. Can you guys see that at all? That's probably yeah. too small. Is that yes. a map of hell? <laughs> no, oh my god! Scotland. <laughs> okay, 
So, okay, if you guys can see, so there's Speyside, Highland. Islands are technically not a region. They are, they're lumped in with Highlands, but they kind of have their own, you know, profile. So this map anyway says that they're their own kind of region. And then there's Isla, and then you can't see it because of my dang, let me move it. You can't see it because of my dang thing, but there's the Lowlands and then Campbelltown at the end. So that's what the regions of Scotland look like. So we're going to be drinking three of those. So we have uh, Highland, Island, if you can count that as one, and then um, a space side. So, so you know, have Highland Islands and then just Highland? Yep. Yeah. So like the mainland, Highland. Oh, let me, let me pull it up again. So the mainland, that yellow region, we have some from there. And then we have one from one of the islands um, that are green. So Okay. Well, I actually have a legit question. Yes. Uh, the differences in all of the regions, and I know that they all taste dra dramatically different. Mm -hmm. Are they are they actually distilled with different grains from that region? Is that why they're called that? Um, no. So a lot of the times you just get Scottish barley. So there's Isla barley uh, that people on Isla use, but you don't have to use Isla barley to be an Isla region. Like there's this one called Lechik, which is a island malt but it uses isla uh barley and isla peat um but basically it's just a taste profile so it's kind of um space sides are going to be kind of like fruity and sherried and then highlands sometimes will have a little bit of smoke in them depending on the um depending on the distillery and then islands kind of have a coastal vibe and then are usually peated or at least somewhat peated uh, Isla is super peated uh, most of the time. There are some unpeated Islas, but um, most of the time it's peat. Um, and then Campbelltown is kind of like this weird kind of funky region. It's kind of a mix of a bunch of different things. Yeah, what's up, Chris? Is there like a like a a guide that you've posted on your channel describing the geographic regions? Because I think that'd be super helpful. Um, I'm going to, but I don't have it like with me, but here, I'm going to just put a, I'm going to put a little like thing. So I have a little tasting sheet that I made and I'll just post, this is probably too big of a chat. We'll see if it's too big. I don't know. Oh yeah. It did cut it off. It definitely fucked it up. Okay. <laughs> but basically it has wow. each, each region and kind of like typical things that you could get from each region. Um, so, so yeah. And then lowlands, um, there's like Auchentoshan is a lowland and it's triple distilled. And a lot of times people think like, oh, so lowlands must all be triple distilled. But that's, I think, one of the only ones that does triple distill. So most scotches are double distilled. Uh, every once in a while you'll get a triple distilled one. But yeah. So hopefully that helps you kind of. You no, know, that, that helps a lot. Somebody asked if we were taking notes and I just want, I mean, I have a pornographic memory, so I don't have to. <laughs> Oh yeah. my gosh, that's awesome. No, yeah, yeah, but this is just this is just supposed to be uh fun and then you know if there's a little if you guys have questions like in the meantime though, uh with any of these, just just let me know. So do you guys wanna try your first one? Yeah, what so another quick question though. Are yes. we are we doing anything with these or are we just telling you rather not we like them? Um if you got do you guys want to uh, do any like guessing on age or or anything obviously they're all 100% malted barley so that's pretty easy but um if you guys want to guess on age or maybe what cask you think uh it was matured in that might be fun but you don't have to i mean anything to make us look dumber than we already do <laughs> right. i mean it is a blind we, we're supposed to look dumb so <laughs> i just okay. want trev to beat me and klein beat oh, you so badly oh, because yeah. i know oh, that yeah. klein and i Klein and I both enjoy scotch, so it'd be so funny if Trev beat us at something. So that would be great. That let's do great. let's do age and barrel. Okay, age and barrel sounds good, guys. Okay, awesome. so Eric, we uh, whiskey studies. It might be clear to explain single malt, blended malt, blended grain. So there's a few different categories. So all of the whiskeys that you're drinking tonight are single malts. So that means it's 100% malted barley. So if it says malt, it's 100% malted barley. And if it says single, it's from a single distillery. So only one distillery made each bottle. If it says blended malt, then it's multiple distilleries. So you can get from a bunch of different distilleries, but it still has to be 100% malted barley. And then 
if you just have blended scotch whiskey, it can actually have grain in it. So it can have grain and malt and it's from multiple distilleries. And then same thing with single grain. So if you have single grain, 100% grain, uh, doesn't have to be a specific grain, it just has to not be malted barley <laughs> um, from a single distillery and then blended grain. I don't even think that exists basically, but uh, it would be a couple distilleries and uh, grain. What the are, are any of these 51% corn? <laughs> no, hundred percent malted barley, all of them. <laughs> so that that would that actually goes to my question. I know that none of these have grain other than barley in them. Yep. But in Scotland, because they don't grow corn there, um, what is the other grains, or what are the other grains they use? So most of the time, it's going to be like wheat or rye or something like that. Um, so if you have a single grain whiskey, it's it's going to be from a single distillery and probably some combination of wheat and rye. Um, but I think they can ship other stuff in. I haven't heard of one being made with corn, but I'm sure it happens. Uh, I just haven't you know come across one yet. So yeah. Scotland. Hmm. So you can have, so I think hmm. I think that is a possibility. Yeah, I mean it's a grain, so yeah. Uh, I just haven't seen one. Okay, guys. So this is the first, and I'm gonna I'm gonna be kind of drinking along with you guys. So yeah, this is it's pretty light. Actually, Klein's camera is way better than mine, so super light. Very urine colored. Yes, it looks like a very yeah. well hydrated pee pee. Yeah, so it has to be pot distilled. So you know you guys are more used to calm distilled. Uh, whiskeys ours have to be uh, in a pot just pot uh, still and have to be aged for a minimum of three years to be called scotch yeah oh and they do use corn thanks Eric maize awesome maize <laughs> maize <laughs> and then if you guys could do a ranking of which ones you hate the right. least <laughs> no just kidding <laughs> I've noticed as I've been smelling this yeah. this whole time there in our lesson i have liked it more as we go i don't okay. know if i just the initial shock puts me off i don't like the that initial thing but the more i smell it the more i'm okay with it okay cool so okay, this says so uh that the malted barley kind of gives me a like a sweaty gym sock note <laughs> and this is say, very very little of that okay yeah. I was gonna say this one's got like a very light rubbery note, but not yeah. anything crazy. Okay. But it so, goes like. Uh, Adriana's asking which category. This is a Highland. This is a Highland malt. So. That's what I was gonna guess. Yeah, that was one. <laughs> I already wrote it down. Highland. All right. Okay, a Scotch face has already happened with Klein. <laughs> well, it's it's got a, a pleasant citrus to it. Okay. But I wasn't expecting off of the nose. Mm -hmm. And I'll be honest. No, oh, go weird, ahead. weird like thing in the middle of my palate. It does like a weird, like almost like a dancing in the middle of my palate. Mm -hmm. This one reminds me a lot of uh, of Century Toki. It's got that really nice light honeysuckle on the nose. All right, stop showing off. Also, cheers, guys. Oh yeah, cheers. Thanks for coming on guys. And thanks for drinking something that you're not super comfortable with. It's awesome. I was going to say, this is so delicate that I almost get nothing. I okay. have to really stop in like, it's like yeah. the sides of my tongue are picking stuff up. And then yeah. the rest of it's being like, I don't, I'm, what did, what did you just drink? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so kind of spicy on the, the uh-huh. I'm getting like alcohol spice on the mid okay. palate. Yeah. But without a flavor accompanying it, it's kind of interesting. That's, yeah, yeah. that's what I'm noticing. It's like the sides of my tongue is what I'm where I'm tasting. Mm -hmm. That's a really good description, like, guys. That's a really good description. Once you like know what you're drinking, that'll uh that'll make sense. So like a citrus mm -hmm. honey. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. If if you brought this to me from my bar, I would have told you it was Toki. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's really, really light. So yeah, if you guys want to guess the age and guess the barrels. Well, also, Whiskey Mountains, don't apologize for that. Thank you for reposting those. What are the what are the barrels that we have choices from? Okay, so there's ex bourbon, virgin oak, port, sherry, 
think that's it. <laughs> okay. Next bourbon, virgin oak, port, yep. and sherry. Yep. Well, I I could look like a total idiot, but I'm going to go out and say that this is not port or sherry. Okay. What an idiot. That was my <laughs> guess. <laughs> I actually, I feel like it might be um, virgin oak. Okay. I almost would want to guess that just by the color of yeah. Yeah. that. It, and just to know. clarify, there's a, t there's a ton of other barrels that it could be aged in. I'm just saying for the flight that you guys have, those are the options. So there okay, are a fair. ton of other, uh, you know, finishings that they, when you say virgin Oak, is that like, they don't, it's just wood. They don't, do they char the barrel? So or is it um, just a wood and barrel. It's uh, toasted and charred. Um, sometimes they just do like a medium toast, I, I think on it, but I think most of the time it's charred. Um, but basically, yeah, it's like a new charred oak barrel from okay. America, but instead of having bourbon in it before, it's just, it has, it hasn't had anything in it. It just, just scotch gets put into it. So I'm going to say right. ex-bourbon. I was going to say, if that's the case, this is probably ex-bourbon because it's so light. Okay. Because if it was a, my, my feeling, I could be wrong, but if it was a, if it was a newer barrel, it'd have more color. Um, and there also could be, um, multiple casks per her, uh, you know, like it could be finished in something, so it could be it no, started too much. and then finish in another thing. So I'm only guessing one thing. Okay. <laughs> and I've I've already I've wanted to change my answer, but you know I'm just gonna stick with it. What I wrote down is what we're going with. Yeah, yeah. I like where so, your heads at. Also, so because I don't oh, actually yeah. know, I can talk myself into something, but at the end of the day, I have no freaking clue what any of these are supposed that's to be okay. like, so. this is all that part is just for fun you you know no pressure on that and if you guys don't you know want to answer for any of them no big deal it's it's more just to kind of explore some scotch so no, no i have to win that's the thing. are there uh are there uh age ranges like are, are there rules for scotch that it has to be aged a certain amount of time or it has to be aged a minimum of three years to be called scotch. So you can't get a two-year-old scotch. It doesn't exist, but it has to be at least three years old. And then uh, same thing if it has an age statement, that's the youngest whiskey that goes in. Same as bourbon. So so do you yeah. get a youthful graininess uh, like you do from bourbon from scotch? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, there's kind of this, it, it's quite apparent on A, I would say. Um, yeah just this kind of young, you know, this youngness, um, kind of just a young grain. And then I get, it's kind of, I hate to say metallic -y cause I feel like I get that on some Irish whiskeys, but there's maybe just that uh, kind of like what Chris was saying when you have alcohol in the palate, but there's not flavor accompanying it. It's just kind of this alcohol spike a little bit. So, yeah. I, I feel like it my, so my guess would be that it's a ex bourbon barrel of probably age about four years. It's, okay. It seems young to me, but I don't know. Yeah, cool. All right, I'm going to say X bourbon six years. Okay. Okay, so DC has a dumb question for me. If there are no dumb questions. Uh, what did Scotch producers use before bourbon barrels existed? Uh, probably a bunch of sherry casks. That was probably what they could get a hold of. X bourbon barrels are much less expensive than sherry casks, though. So about 90% of Scotch whiskey is aged in bourbon barrels. And then usually it's finished in sherry or some other uh, type. There's some that are just exclusively X bourbon, but they're much cheaper for sure. So I was going to, uh, my guess is X bourbon. Okay. I don't know. And I was thinking I was going to put six, but just for the sake of, I don't want to tie. I'm just going to say five. <laughs> okay. All right, all right. I'm just going all in. Cool. I have no idea. I do feel like it's probably younger, but I don't know what young scotch tastes like compared to the other ones either. So, okay. all right. So, you guys want to go? Do you guys want to move on to B? Yep. Okay. <clears throat> hey, just out of curiosity, on the first one, yeah, price range, I would, I would guess like twenty nine. Okay, that's a that's a pretty good guess. Do you guys want to know the price after you drink it? Oh no, you yes, should please. do your rank. You should do your rank, and then once we rank all of them, then I'll give you the price before we Ooh. reveal. <clears throat> all right, so B. So we're moving up in scale. So that was a pretty hydrated fellow. <laughs> and this is, you know, slightly, he's getting there. He's pretty little, good, but. A little darker, yeah. Huh. All right. This one smells like you're walking up to a Subway sandwich place. 
it, it, it does have like a breadiness to it. Yeah, bready that that like fake Subway white bread that's so delicious, and then oh, like yeah, the best note I've ever heard. <laughs> the faintest bit of black olives. Seven slices of black olives. Oh, I'll like be honest. Them. I don't know. I don't know the notes that I'm smelling. That's okay. I have no clue okay. what to call them. It's more just to just experience it. It's all right. I will say this though: both of mm -hmm. the, these first two noses, I've liked substantially better than other things that I've tried in the past. Oh, cool! That's great. I'm not getting yeah, a whole lot of that super malty, sweaty. Yeah. yeah. You know yeah. that thing. Yeah, like yeah. a little bit sour kind of thing. It's it's kind of there, but it's way toned down versus the other ones that I've had that I yeah. didn't like. That's interesting. So this has got a lot of that palette. The is it is this is higher proof than the last one that we just had? Uh yes. Yeah. <laughs> Tom R, that's why I clarified Subway sandwich versus like Subway two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That might be the the sweaty thing that we're talking about. <laughs> Not a great note. This one this has more... definitely has more of that maltiness to it than the last one, but it's it's got a uh, a unique bit of flavor to it. Something like uh, this one might be one of the finished ones. The okay, so it's uh, oily. Oily. It, yeah. it, it's very. It it has a great mouth coating. It yeah. really is. It's really oily. I don't know how something smells oily, but it actually is oily. That's a great note. That's a great note. Yeah. Um, so Adriana, this is a coastal highland. That'll give some scotch drinkers a hint. Um, I had some weird kind of I know what it is now. icy all over my tongue thing going on with that one. You got a what? Like it it was super spicy on the tongue. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I get that too. Yeah, Chris it's like knows spice, exactly which it's, one this it's is. It's got a little bit of oiliness. Chris, you know what this is? No, I absolutely don't. I was kidding. Oh, okay. Like, oh, <laughs> I was like, wow, like, that's Oh, crazy. yeah. This is uh, Glenn Gooley. Oh, gosh. I thought that was awesome. Yeah. Is the, is the, the malt that I'm getting, does it, does it have a little pea in it? Um. So this one supposedly has a very light amount of peat. I didn't really get any peat on this, but I've been drinking more heavily peated stuff, so I might be a little bit desensitized to it, but apparently it is just slightly peated. And I so get that more on the texture than the flavor, so. Yeah, the difference that I was getting in the, with what I said, this more malty, is I actually think that there might be that little bit of peat. It's yeah. not like super smoky or anything. It's just enough of an earthiness. Yeah, yeah. I get it. I know what you're talking about, but yeah. I get it af like right now when I'm sitting here in that residual flavor in my mouth, it feels as if I had a peat like an hour ago. Yeah. Yeah. So I can I can tell there was a little bit residual. Like you had a sip of Lagavulin and then ate some fried cheese. Yep. <laughs> and then now we're here. Yeah, I kind of get a I call it effervescence because it kind of has this little it's just like effervescence on the on the palate. That's when I kind of know that I'm drinking something at least a little bit peated. I get that. So, yeah, yeah. Do you guys get like any like baby throw up at the beginning on the nose now after sipping it? I think that the baby throw up's that little bit of peat that I'm. I'm not getting a whole lot of vomit. No. <laughs> that's that's really good. <laughs> no, well, it's that. I'm not saying like like an oh adult, no I know what you mean uh, yeah you know like baby spit up like that that slightly sour barely curdled milk yeah, yeah it, just, it's a little tiny bit sour so yeah I get what you're saying fuzz a fuzz of sourness yeah a fuzz of sourness I'm changing your name to that in my phone <laughs> changing my name yeah perfect. I like it. This one's really, the longer I smell and taste it, it's just like the delicateness just keeps revealing more things. Cool. I'm so glad you guys are at least not hating these. <laughs> it's great. See, with this though, I just, I have age, I have zero clue. 
Yeah. Like, I, I just genuinely don't know any signs. Do you signs think it's older it. or younger than A? It's probably older. older, but by how much, I don't know. Right, right. Okay. I don't get any of that youthful graininess that I got on A. So yeah, yeah. I think it's definitely older. Um, I'm trying to figure out that flavor. And I, I got to be honest, I don't know. What are the choices again? Uh, new. I think this one... I don't think it has a finish, like a sherry or anything. Yeah, so there's ex-bourbon, virgin oak, sherry, port, and I think that's it for for this flight. I feel like I'm everything that I'm, that I'm getting off of this is um, the way that the distiller intended it. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it might be the virgin, virgin oak. Okay. So I'll give you guys a note here, um, and this will probably give it away for – for some people, but um, candle wax or like a beeswax, if you guys try it and just let it sit on your palate, if you guys get any of that. Well, I was gonna say a little bit of honey, but I'd said that on the last one too, and I don't wanna keep going with the same notes, but I do get a little honey. Yeah. No, honey for sure is, a, it's a really common note in, in scotch, so. Yeah, I'm tasting are you on, bees. Are you on B or C, Clem? I'm still on B, but Eric Waite wanted me to hold it up to the, the camera. Uh, yeah. So I will I will say that I wrote down clover honey. Okay. Yeah. Because it's it reminds me of that like dark honey that you get at like the farmer's market. Yeah, yeah. The coating of your mouth, I can get that beeswax, mm -hmm. candle wax you're talking about. I mean it really just holds on to your tongue. It's it's almost a like a thickness. Yeah, 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 super like hey, buddy. viscous. Yeah, remember you, thickness. <laughs> I heard my name. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, Lone Water says honey and scotch is like vanilla and bourbon. It kind of goes without saying. Yeah, so like, you know, okay. butterscotch and honey and stuff like that, they're pretty common characteristics um, with, with scotch. So, yeah, if you say honey, it's kind of like saying vanilla or caramel, which is totally fine. That's that's what you're getting. So, no worries. I'm gonna go ex bourbon. 12 no ex bourbon 10 years old okay what i you said i said I ex bourbon 12. I, I said i said 10 year but i said uh um new new uh like a virgin oak or virgin oak yeah okay okay cool all right do you guys want to go on to see yeah i feel like i'm absolutely crushing this i don't think i've missed a single answer so <laughs> C, C smells really sweet now yeah yeah Especially coming off the heels of B. Yeah. Oh yeah, like, that is way sweeter. Oh, like man. fruity, fruity Skittles. Yeah, yeah. It oh, butter. This almost so doesn't butter? smell like a scotch. Butter, you said? Yes. This smells like yeah. when you put butter in the skillet before you add the eggs. Yeah. I'm not getting yeah. like any kind of of that malt at all. Okay, it's subdued a little bit. I'm just getting fruitiness. Cool. Sweet fruitiness. If oh, I was drunk good. enough, I would say this is probably Eagle Rare. <laughs> you know what's funny? Actually, <laughs> let me show you something real quick. Okay, Adriana says, what category is C? So it classifies itself as a Highland, but it's actually a Speyside. So because Speyside is in the Highland region, anybody that's in Speyside can call themselves a Highland malt, just like differentiate themselves. But it's made in Speyside. It's a Speyside style. They just call it. It's funny. It says Highland Single Malt, and then it says Product of Speyside, like in the on the tin and on the on the bottle. So they just do it as like a marketing thing. But uh, but yeah, it's a Speyside. Can I can I say this? I don't. You know, maybe I don't actually spend enough time nosing all of my things. But like the more I move it around, I start getting like I'll, I can move it around my nose, and I'm like, oh wait, there's malt. Yeah, but then yeah. I move it back, and I'm like, okay, the malt's gone. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so like, again, I could be I could be way off because I'm trying to pull things out of here that I'm familiar with. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like it has almost an Angel's Envy esque. Yes. Okay. Uh, taste to it. So it's got that that nose, and 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 so maybe it's got some port. So uh, real quick, so the when I bought this bottle, the cork broke on it, and so I have to use my. I had an extra Eagle Rare, uh, so you said it, it smelled like Eagle Rare. Maybe that was the maybe That's that was the cork. <laughs> so 
that's why. But yeah, so this is some, so of the, some of the residual legal rare dropped. It came out of the cork into this. Yep. This is so pretty. It's like Danish butter cookies. Mm, yeah. Good notes, you guys. Gosh, for people that don't drink scotch that often, you guys are killing it. I'm just a fat guy, so you're welcome. For that. <laughs> I feel I like think, we all, like fat people are really good at making tasty notes. <laughs> we eat a lot. <laughs> I think that's my favorite so far. Yeah. It okay. does have a, I don't know, Klein probably put it in my head, but there's some kind of character, Angel's Envy ask maybe it's what it's maybe it's you know the barrel that it was in i don't know yeah yeah it's like uh if you took the banana notes away from angels Envy and just left the nella wafers okay and, and almost almost a little bit of like pear yeah yeah that's a pretty common note with uh with space sides like apple and pear that kind of thing old man joe i would have guessed irish if if it's a all it's like, 100% scotch. I'm not uh, not trying to trick anybody. <laughs> yeah. But but Old Man Joe is like butter cookies, Irish whiskey. Yeah. And that's I agree with that. But I will say that Irish has that metallic flavor that goes with the butter cookies. This has none of the metallic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. It's it's also got a thinness to it. Uh huh. Like, well, this one, the, the B was really like it just kind of enveloped your whole mouth. This has a very thinness. Like as soon as it hits, it's like gone. Yep. Yeah. Hey Bourbon, bye take Cliffy. The freaking legend you. last night. I don't know if you guys <laughs> that yeah. was just so awesome. He was switching rooms, uh, and he had Trev's background uh and was nope. wearing glasses and stuff. That's and the funny thing. He he didn't switch he was here. He was here, yeah, he, he was, was there. in my room. He can I was super confused. I, was, I thought he was visiting David and Kira, <laughs> and then he kept switching, and I was like, that's an amazing green screen. It's awesome. Yeah, it, it looked way too real. It was like, what the heck? It was actually very impressive. How he, I don't know how he got me out of this so well, but... Sometimes you go to the bathroom, Trump. Yeah, you leave the stream a lot. <laughs> yeah. You listen here. <laughs> I do, too. Look, I forget. I get down and I'm like, well, I left everything right over there and I got to yeah. go get it. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, my yeah, God. Definitely coming off the heels of beet. I think this one is a little bit thinner. Um, it doesn't have the same kind of texture, which is a little bit of a bummer, but it's got I a decent know. flavor. I think so. Pretty good. You, you want to yeah. really F up your uh, your nose? Go to D and then come, come back to C. <laughs> I'm really enjoying C. I don't know if I want to go to D if it's going to. Yeah, F I don't want to F up anything. So D D is D is even more vanilla y and sweeter. And then you come back to C and you're like, "What happened to this?" So I bought I bought a D actually specifically for What's you guys heck? because I was hoping you'd like it. <laughs> so we'll see. But are these the cookies that they're talking about? The Walker shortbread cookies. Somebody said that the Scots talk about them. Oh. I don't. Oh, okay. Maybe something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I I agree. They're very very buttery. Can y'all hear my dogs barking? Do I need to put them away? No, you're fine. Okay, no, I haven't heard anything. Chris, will you shut your damn dog up? <laughs> <laughs> I hate it. I'm surprised you guys haven't heard Biggin. He's the one always making the noise. He meows so loud. He wants it to. He's deaf, so he probably doesn't hear how mm. annoying he is. Oh, but he's handsome. I, I wonder if I'm deaf. If this what? smells that's like because uh, I don't know how annoying I am either. <laughs> <laughs> You're not annoying, Klein. Okay, are we, so are, are you guys are still, still on? C? Are you are you guys guessing uh, the the barrel in the age? Oh, I forgot to do that. So. I almost say feel sure. like initially um, I was thinking port, but I don't think it's port. It doesn't have that same wine esque. It's the sweetness of it. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking it might be a sherry cask. Okay. So I'm going to say I sherry and maybe like a. I don't know. I, I, I think I'm going to attribute the thinness to uh, age and okay. I'm gonna say it's like a six year, but okay. I don't know if that's true. So. ADHD whiskey. The mad oh, attack yeah, is in. The age is what always trips me up. Like I definitely I wrote down Sherry. That 
I wrote that down just right off the bat. But yeah. the age, I just, I cannot tell. I have no freaking clue. I'm going to say 12. You guys don't have any reference points, so it's that's really difficult. <laughs> so. Yeah. I know Scotch is, Scotch is older. I'm saying 14. Okay. I just don't. Personally, Can I don't feel like wait till I say a number and then add two. <laughs> no, <laughs> honestly, they, I wrote it down, but then I, I'm like, I don't know, I yeah. don't know. I mean, this is I would I would imagine that Scotch is the same as bourbon, right? The longer it is, the more complex it gets, and I just, I don't know. I, like I said, I could be completely wrong. I just don't feel like C is very complex at all. There's, right, right. No, I would totally agree with that. I just that I only also guess these numbers because the only ones I've tried were like 12 and 14 years. So yeah. I feel like that's a pretty good number to guess. I okay. don't know. Okay. That didn't taste like any age to me, to be honest. I don't know. Yeah. No, that's hard when you don't have reference points for sure. This is how I feel when I have bourbon guys. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's perfectly fair. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So do you guys want to move to, to D? Check it out. The cannon's here. Okay, that's D. Now, this is the one we poured out, and I was like, that is some peachy colored copper looking stuff. Yeah, this is HBR on Sunday morning. <laughs> <laughs> it smells really good, though. Okay. It does. Probably my favorite nose so far, by far. So, when I originally had this whiskey, I thought, I think bourbon drinkers will like this, or at least the nose. And, uh, so that was why I got it because I wanted I wanted you guys to try it. Are you getting like a little bit of wine on the nose? Yeah, like a yeah, like the the dank fruitness. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good description. Like a sangria, almost like a like a sweet sour red. Yeah, I mean, especially coming from C to this one, you get yeah. it, it's much more prevalent. Yeah, I will say also this one kind of reminds me of two in the fact that it might be lightly peated or have some kind of PD influence. Okay. Where are you get where are you getting that? On the nose, you're getting that same, that same like kind of like rubber gloves from another room. So the peat uh, is negligible in this one. It's like one to two parts per million. So. And that's the content of it before the production. So it pretty much unpeats anything that was in the dried barley uh, during all the production. So technically, they call themselves an unpeated malt. And I would agree with that. Well, I'm wrong. That's fine. But I, I know why you're getting peat. Um, and we can talk about it uh, after, after we know what it after is. After you guess, yeah. I don't know. I think I might have liked the nose better. Yeah. The nose was much better. I was, I I was excited for something, and, and and I got burnt rubber. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really glad you just said that it's unpeated because on the palate, I would swear it's peated. Yeah. So it's funny. I bought this. So I had a sample of it, mm. and I thought, oh, this is really good. And the the palate was not like this when I first poured it. It was way sweeter, and I thought, oh, man, this will be perfect. But I think with um, a little bit of oxidation, it's just kind of – it's changed, and it's not as sweet as I thought it was going to be um, with you guys having it. So I'm going to say poor finish. Oh, Andrea, Adriana said that I uh, I look mad at it. I am mad at it because it was – it's a – it – it, it lied to me. Like the nose yeah. had me excited for something that the palate didn't do. I mean, I wouldn't say the palate was bad, but I was it set the nose set it up to be like, this is it. This is the yeah. one that's gonna convert yeah. me. And then I drank it and was like, uh eh, no. Yeah. Not as good. Yeah, I thought this one was gonna like when I when I nosed it, I was like, Oh yes, perfect. This is what I'll send them. And then I had it uh after I already sent you guys samples and I was like Damn it! <laughs> so, do you guys almost and and this could be a completely fabrication of my brain? Mm -hmm. I almost get like on the palate, and I don't know how I get it on the palate because I've never tasted it. But you know when you strike a match, that sulfur smell, like yeah. I almost get that on the palate. Yeah. Like, yep. Yeah. When you when you go cyclic on a machine gun, all the gases off the barrel get into your mouth and nose. That's what that tastes like to me. 
Yeah. So partially I like it. Partially I don't. Yeah. Metallic. No, you, guys are, you guys are coming up with really good notes. That's crazy. It smells like it's raining brass. Yeah. Sounds like it's Maybe raining the, America. The <laughs> color kind of helps it too. Looks Plain like a spin chasing. Mm. Is this one slightly higher proof, Shayla? Uh, higher proof than the last one, yes. I don't. I think. I think B is the higher proof of all of them so far. B. Really. This is back to having a good mouth feel, though. This is mm -hmm. it, it coats really well. Um. I think this one is, I don't know. I would have to, I'll have to side by side B and D, but this one was coming off to me higher, the highest proof so far, but I also don't really remember B. Did you say where this was from, Shayla? Um, oh, I, I probably didn't. It's uh, Highland. This tastes just like a uh, Highland Park 12 year to me. Which one? D? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I also can read the chat, Michael. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, That's oh, why I said it. Oh. <laughs> so the, the reason. Okay. Well, actually, we'll, we'll that go was over my it. exact guess. God, what are you saying? Tastes like machine gun. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's awesome. Adriana's just killing it. She's putting all the little potential, and obviously, there's tons of potential notes. These are just kind of a general profile uh, kind of thing, but she's doing great. Thank you. Thank you for your help, Audrey. Sherry G in the chat. Sherry G. And uh, Tito, or uh, Libation Exploration, was in the chat, and he was pouring a scotch. I don't know what he was pouring, but... What's up, I... Dirk, you fantastic mother effer? <laughs> he's pretty awesome. So he's saying muckety muck, which is the orphan barrels. Oh, okay. That one with the pig on it? It's something stomping through the peat, I guess. Yeah, I think it, I think it was a pig, but I can't remember. I don't have that bottle. <laughs> so it's not that, but thank you, Tito. I'm going to say this. It's not any more real. <laughs> this is Sherry. Okay, uh, D? Yeah, it's Sherry. Okay. I'm gonna, Only I'm gonna because of the color. Port. You're saying I, port? Yeah, I said, I said port. I actually said port finish, but I meant to say export. Yeah, I'm going to say port, and I'm going to say it's 12 years. Okay. I'm oh, going to say really... it's 13 years. I didn't really guess. Um, like, I like where your head's at, HBR. <laughs> so I, I I also think it's 12, but I one of us has to be right. So yep. okay. it can be you. There we go. Might be the I'm only one I get right if you think I'm right. <laughs> I might just have to go back to my trusted number of 14. Okay. <laughs> That's what is the age on all of them? <laughs> That's awesome. It Ooh. smells fourteen years old. Okay. <laughs> you guys what are kind so of port, awesome. Cliffy? Are you doing Ruby Port, Tawny Port? What do you got? Yeah, what you got, Cliffy? All right, I got E. Okay. That's what E looks like, boys and girls. It's it. It's in the worst class I have. <laughs> the Trev Wilson. The Kenzie. Bourbon Ridge class, but you know it is. It's pretty messed up, man. I would never talk about you like that. And by worst, I mean the best. There we go. <laughs> oh, hey, Sherry got her package. I was going to ask you. I Ooh, hope awesome. it showed up in one piece. Okay, so this there's, one there's smells, a lot. This one smells like the peatiest one so far. Okay. It's got like that smoked meats wow. and uh, delicious bacon. Oh my gosh, the first smell inside of a bacon. reminded me something, and it was it was. Something I've smelled outdoors before. Okay. And I gotta, I gotta think of what it is, but it's, I don't know, not the, not the most pleasant. Klein is smelling pizza and then smelling his bourbon or his whiskey. <laughs> I want to see if I can get bacon. I'm like, okay. Hey. So this one is technically a Highland, but if you, if you go with the uh, Island classification, it's an Island malt so it's it's made on one of the islands in scotland not isla so is it brand body island. it smells like it came from an island mm -hmm. it it smells like island malt? 
Uh, Brucladi is uh, from Isla, so it's not it's not from Isla. It's one of the other islands. Is mm. it, can it can it smell salty? Yeah, for sure. No, I get a really coastally kind of salty kind of thing. That's what that's what I got was this brininess. Yeah, briny. That's a really yeah good description. I don't even know what briny means, but I feel it. <laughs> I, I feel it in my soul. That's briny. <laughs> <laughs> I love Trev. Trev's like. Somebody said salty. I mean brine. It's brine. Is that salt, right? <laughs> is, that, is that where I got? Uh, Jerry Black's on the Glen Ford. Glen, I can't talk. Glen Finnick, 14 year, Burn Barrel Reserve. I like that one, Jerry Black. I was going to send you guys that one, but I didn't. I think it is a really good intro, but I didn't want it to be like, it says bourbon on it. So this would be something that bourbon drinkers like. I was trying to make a, you know, different kind of lineup, but. Yeah, go ahead and drink that one. <laughs> Trev is not happy. That's definitely, uh, that's, oh boy, there it comes. That ain't my favorite. Nope, okay. You put, I put you it put at put the last. <laughs> <laughs> Klein is so, eat some pizza, wash it down. So oh. that that uh, that finish, that's uh, that's that sour ashtray finish that that turns me off from scotch. Okay. Like the other three di didn't have that. This one has that. It has that get the nope out of here sort okay. of. Uh, Klein, you don't like. All right. <laughs> it's like almost like a like creosote or like. A, mm -hmm. Like if you are inside a pit barbecue restaurant and the pit's not going and you just have like the rem the remainder of the smell of that barbecue. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, Aquavite Roisin. Sorry I'm not What's able to up, watch man? but I'm listening on buds. Fascinating. These I know they're sharing great notes. Yeah. Okay, where can I find the read key? Okay, if you guys close your can you guys close your eyes for like ten seconds and I'll put the Oh no, he can't he can't see. He can't see. Never mind. He's not watching. Okay. I don't have the key off of me. I'm not. Uh, I'm not as fancy as you, and I forgot to make one. <laughs> Mark Slinger is saying hi to Roy. Sorry, what were you saying? Somebody was saying something. Is is it just me or is Trev meditating? She said, "Close our eyes, bro." Oh, oh. no! I'm sorry. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I, I was gonna show him the bottles real quick, but then he said he can't watch. He's listening on Bud, so I was like, "Oh, he." He can't see what I'm what I'm putting down, so that's not helpful. I see, and again with the nose to the palate, E makes me angry because that that meatiness that yeah. like I really wanted to come through didn't. I I mean, like if I have, I'm trying to think of what it was, but it. And I don't think Gary's here or Will Will Zerk might be here, but we had a a scotch that tasted just like barbecue sauce. It smelled like oh, nice. meat, and it tasted like it was, and it was a lot of peat was in it. But somehow, what they did made it taste like barbecue sauce. I'm like, I could drink that all day long. Right? Oh, cool! Barbecue sauce. So it's got the it's got the oakiness, like post oak with mesquite burning but without any of the sweetness that would make it like a flavor I'd want to get into a lot. Right. Yeah. I don't want to drink this anymore. That's okay. That's okay. We'll, we'll stop. <laughs> DC it says hurt, Optimore. It, it's not an ILS. So no, it's it not hurt me. Oh. It it's hurt not me. that aggressive, DC. Yeah. No, no it's and not. This will be kind of cool because we can go back and I'll tell you kind of what they are and then we can kind of retaste them and you guys will actually understand like, you know what's what's going on so yeah yeah it's and that's the thing it's it's not aggressive it's already gone yeah yeah so sometimes yeah. when they get something like and it just holds on and holds on, i can't drink anything else that yeah. really annoys me this is this was not what i would choose to to drink but it's already gone i don't yeah it's not lingering that's what i you know it was like kind of in my face and i very off-putting but it wasn't like the other ones that just stay in your mouth for the next 30 minutes so yeah it's already gone i'm fine now 
there is some residual on the very back end. It does feel like I just had barbecue or something. Yeah, I get it's it. It reminds me of like, uh, like if you smoke a cigar the next morning, not the next morning, but like the next day by lunch, the way your mouth tastes. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I get a little bit of kind of smoked meat on the nose, but yeah, not as much on the palate, maybe just a little bit, but yeah, I do wish a little bit more of that came through, but. Yeah, DC, it might have been an Octomore, uh, come to think of it, the, the, the barbecue one. Oh, what you had. Oh, probably was. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Well, I mean, there's other ones that it could be, but I know Dan has some of those, and um, uh, he kind of says that they, they have that sort of characteristic, so. Yep. I'm going to say ex-bourbon, 18 years. Okay. Ex-bourbon, 20 years. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was not going to say 20. Okay, then I'm going to go 19. I wrote um, I did bourbon 12. Okay. That's what I put. I don't I'm know. really excited. We'll do, we'll do a point each, and I'm excited to see who, quote, unquote, wins. But, <laughs> but it's just you guys all win because you get to try new things. And we'll try yep. totally different ones the next time, and hopefully we'll did, just continue. Did you write down what we said? No. No, we'll go through it again, I guess. I didn't write anything down. Oh, shit. <laughs> I remember. Oh, oh, well. Oh, well. <laughs> it was just everything that was incorrect, so I can win. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Consistent, inaccurate answers. Oh, yep. Okay. And then, you, okay. So you guys should, if you can, write down a ranking if you guys want to try to go through a couple yeah, and me, just get your little ranking down. That was this one. Sure. So people are guessing lots of different bottles. People are saying Leche, Highland Park. It's not an Isla, guys. Uh, Kalila, Lafroy. Nope. You guys aren't listening. <laughs> I'm no, glad I only poured half because I'm going back. They taste different after tasting E. Yeah, yeah. And that's why I put it at the end. I didn't want to mess up your guys' palates too much, so I just put that at the at the tail end. So, so D kind of reminds me of whenever you go to a, a resort in Mexico and the way that the rooms smell when they've just cleaned them. <laughs> that's awesome. Like Fabuloso and Sea Air. Yeah, Fabuloso. I totally get that. D I just makes me mad, it. though, by how good it was on the I nose. Know. And it didn't deliver so on the palate. I noticed I just went back and sipped the. I think the longer you let it sit, the more of the nose kind of shows up on the palate because I just, it tasted a little bit fruitier and a little bit sweeter. Um, on D? With, with me letting it sit uh, just a second ago. Yeah, I just had it. I don't know if that's the case for you guys, but. I, I didn't well, know if it was D or D. Coming off of E, it tastes better. Yeah, right. I will say, yeah, oh, gotcha, gotcha. it's a little bit sweeter now going back to it, but maybe that was also the fact that I've had E in my mouth. Yeah. Yeah. And those notes are now tasting sweeter because I yeah. still have that smoky, charry thing going on. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I really enjoyed C the first way through, but going back E, D, C, C has almost no flavor. But do you think it's getting masked by, like, if you drink... I mean, it's like if you drink a little Freud and then you try and drink yeah. anything else, you're not going to taste anything. Yeah, I think that's what happened. So I will say that I think that your your order was fantastic. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, I was trying to make sure that it was a decent order. Yeah, C does not taste very good off the heels of <laughs> E and <laughs> D. <laughs> Climate that pizza looks incredible. What? <laughs> hey, that pizza though will never beat the pizza Chris and I shared. Find out in October. Did you guys did you guys eat it lady in the tramp style? <laughs> yeah. the there in were the no bed. ladies, all tramps. Oh, all tramps. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um. <laughs> I was just about to say something bad, and I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> Say it. Say it's it. probably true. So I was, just, I was just going to talk about, you know, Klein and HBR's uh, little hotel adventure. You know, if he's going to try to talk about 
you know, what goes on behind closed doors. <laughs> I was definitely the lady that time. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. For sure, Eric. <laughs> It's surprising how I wasn't honestly expecting to keep going back and pouring more of this in here, but yeah. Which one is I, it? I, well, I, I'm 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 side by siding a couple of them, and I thought yeah. I would just know. Yeah. And or not want to pour any more of this. Right. Like, nope. <laughs> We're done. I can tell you what. C with pizza is fantastic. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Mm. God, that pisses me off. D. D pisses me off. I know. I'm so sorry. It was sweet. So, Shayla, I'm going to tell you that yeah. before drinking them, I have an order, and then going back through them, I have a completely different order. The only okay. thing that's the same is five is last place both times. Okay. I would maybe oh, I'm sorry. with your first D. order. D. Oh, D. D. Is the last. D. Okay. Because it was so disappointing. Okay. I would say, and and I agree with Shayla. Always go with your first order because that's the that's how you're going to grab that off the shelf at your house and decide whether or not you want to drink it. You're not right. going to drink them in succession. So if you know that your first time through, oh, I really like this one, you might go back and do that. Yeah. yeah. Good call. Uh, Will Zerk. Hey, Shayla, you better not turn these guys to the dark side. Haha. -ha. Cheers, all. That's the plan, guys. We're <laughs> trying to, this is, you know, Roy's like evangelism thing. You know, we're trying to just share why we like scotch. And hopefully, if they don't like any of these, that's totally fine. And then if they, maybe they'll like some other ones the next time we, we go through it. So, you know, I freaking love Will Zerk more than anyone will know. <laughs> Who doesn't? We we met for the first time and it was absolutely incredible. Will Zerk has crashed on my couch more than anybody. I don't I don't know why you why you don't do it, Trev. I I gosh dang it, I'm coming. All right. <laughs> That's not the last time I've said it. Mm -hmm. And you uh, take that exactly as you wish. <laughs> uh the can Andrew, the Cannon Buchanan, is pouring himself some Deanston. Little this guy, well, not this guy, because this is the 12 year, but 59%. That's that's crazy. Mm. I, I don't even know what that one, what that could be, but sounds good. So could it is, be a private modeling. What's up? Could it be somebody that was sourcing Deanston at a higher proof? It might be an independent modeling, yeah. And it might be one of their older ones. Maybe they did a higher proof on on something. I'm not sure. We'll have to we'll, let us know. Cannon. Can you tell me if B is the highest proof? Uh, yeah, you guys aren't guessing proof. So uh, D and B are the same proof. But okay. yes, those are the highest. D and B? D and B. Yep, same proof, but uh, they're the highest. Yeah, I knew it. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't know that. Well, I knew they were. I thought they were both higher proof. I didn't know which one was higher, but. I will say they're both the most flavor dense. I'm just, I think the most shocking thing out of all of this is the fact of how much I love the nose on D. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I would buy this just to smell it. Yeah. Like, I love smelling this one. Yeah, when I first Thank had you. it, it was so much sweeter. Um, I think with a little bit of oxidation, it just kind of, it just changed for for the bad if you're a bourbon drinker. Uh, it, I I enjoy it, but not as much as I did when I when I first had it. Was yeah. B the one that had the Eagle Rare Cork? Because I swear. Uh, C was. Oh, okay. All right. Good. Yeah. I, I feel like D for me, the the nose of it pushes it further up the ladder than it probably should be. Right. Because I, I spend a lot of time nosing bourbon and nosing my whiskeys before I actually drink them. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like over time, my palate can adjust to whatever D is. Right, right. Whatever the off-puttingness that I get from D, I could adjust to. Unlike E, like I don't, I don't know that I'm ever going to adjust to what E is. Right, That's right. Okay. That's not a note for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty set in my order. Okay, cool. How, how is everybody else doing? You have your order? Yeah, I got I'm mine. Set. Okay. 
Okay, so we want to go through order first, maybe? And sure. then we'll, or, oh, actually, just maybe everybody go around. We'll do, like, what you thought A was, or shit. Should we do, we'll do rank, and then we'll do your guesses for age and barrel. Does that sound okay? I don't remember my guesses. Oh, shit, that's right. I'm, okay. I think you wrote it. I, I remember list. some of his because I'm, I, our guesses are in between each other, so. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, no worries. Just whoever has guesses, cool. But go ahead and we'll do your rank. We'll do Chris's rank and then Klein's and then Trev's. And then, yeah, see what we get. And I'll write them down as we go, so. Okay. So my rank, <clears throat> and I'm going to go with the one from the beginning, not the one now. Okay. But I will great. say these. And you're going best? Are you going best to worst? Yes. One okay, to five. Right. B C A E D. Okay. Okay, I'm posting that in the comment. Okay, and then this. Prime time, Michael Klein. Hold on one sec. Okay, what was your order? C B D A E. Okay, what was your order? Um, C A B D E. Okay. So pretty so we, similar. We all had D and E as fourth and fifth, and you guys had the same order. Uh, I had D as third, actually. Oh, um, psych! I'm wrong again. <laughs> but kind of similar. Like you guys seem to like C and B quite a bit. C, B, and A were. Each of your guys' top three, right? Oh, no, no, no. Klein was a little bit different. The D, he... The he only reason I, I flip-flopped D and A was the youthfulness of A. That, yeah, that, yeah. that youthful graininess. It would make it so that if I was... The way I ranked these was if I was going to grab that bottle off my shelf and drink it. Yeah, and yeah. I think that D had more to it than A. And so I, with that youthful, I probably would, wouldn't drink that very often. Okay. Yeah. On yeah. A? On, on A, a yeah. yeah. I liked it, honestly, because of how little malt that I was getting on it. Mm -hmm. It was just, it didn't really scream out, this is scotch to me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's pretty chill. Um, it's pretty okay. light, sweet, no sharp edges. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there wasn't a whole lot going on, but all of the notes that I typically hate with with scotch i didn't really get them so that's okay. why i i could drink i could own that and i could you know occasionally drink that yeah yeah okay cool um okay so do you want to uh so maybe we'll go a what you thought a was in terms of age and uh whatever and then i'll reveal what it is i, I thought it was six years six years old six years old and then what the what for the cask um X bourbon. Okay. I believe that I said it was for an X bourbon. Yeah, you yep, did. Five. X bourbon. Okay. <laughs> All right. So this is Tomatin Legacy, which is a non-age stated Scotch. So at least three years old, but probably probably no, five. Probably no older than three, maybe <laughs> three to four. Um, and it sounds is sounds like a mix, uh, it's a mix like of. Wine. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Chris. It sounds like Klein, uh, his blind luck continues. Yeah, he's he's just has a really good palate, sadly. No, <laughs> um, but it's uh, ex bourbon and virgin oak, so it's mostly ex bourbon. If they did uh, too much virgin oak, it probably would just be too oaky in terms of like a Scotch profile. So uh, it's got some virgin oak and some ex bourbon mixed in. So you guys were pretty spot on. You guys thought it was young and you thought it was ex bourbon. And then virgin oak is just a bourbon cask based basically. So um, yeah, you guys did really good on that one. In my defense, I didn't know that there were any single malts released at just that young. Like that's, that seems crazy to me that you take all the effort to make a single malt pot still and then only age it for three years. Can you yeah, tell think, us the prices too? Oh yeah. So um, that one, I think the reason they did that is they wanted to make kind of an accessible one. So it's only $30. So nice. Yeah. And it's 43%. So, you know, they could have done it at 40, but they tried to make it at least a little bit 
you know, a little bit higher. So yeah, 43% and it's about 30 bucks. So <clears throat> I will so say it's like a monkey shoulder and I like it 1000 times more. Okay. There you go. Cool. Okay. So do you guys want to get, say the guesses for B? Yes. Okay. X bourbon tenure. Okay. I remember I said X bourbon. I don't remember what I said for age. I think I said eight. Eight. Okay. I said X bourbon 12. Okay. So this is one of my favorites. It's a coastal highlands on the north, north, uh, kind of top of the Highland region of Scotland. And it's Kleinleash 14 year. I just did a review of this guy. Mm. So it's 46% ABV. Uh, I think it's mostly X bourbon. It says that there's a, a mix of X bourbon and a little bit of sherry. I think it's very, very light on the sherry. Um, it doesn't say exactly how much, uh, but there is a little bit of X sherry uh, in here. So yeah, and this has that was my a second favorite. Yeah, um, this, yeah, this is one of my one of my favorite whiskeys just of all time. <laughs> um, that was my number yeah, so, one. Oh, was it? Oh, cool. So yeah, it's fourteen years old, and uh, the waxiness that comes from this that mm -hmm. beeswax thing. Um, just kind of a fun little, I think this is really cool, but there's a, uh, faints and four shots receiver and like the faints and four shots sit in this tank over time and then they get transferred to, you know, other vessels, but there's a gunk that builds up, but like all these compounds from the faints and the four shots, uh, build up over time. And that's, uh, why there's waxiness basically. So now when huh. they clean the receiver, they take the gunk out and then they put it back in uh, so that it maintains the kind of like waxy character. So cool. Yeah. What's crazy is how much, you know, obviously I don't know what any of these are, but I remember people in the chat were, they were calling that the whole time. Yeah, They're like, yeah. it sounds like this sounds like that. Pretty much as soon as you say uh, waxy, um, there's like Chaminic, uh, Deanston and Klein Leash are pretty much the three, um, easy ones to guess for if you say beeswax or just wax, candle wax. So, yeah. Oh, thank you, Adriana. Just she's putting in everybody's order in the same, just so much better than I'm doing. <laughs> so good. Okay. Um, okay. Do you guys want to do your guesses for C? Oh, there's Biggin. Yep. He wants to say, hey. Okay. Aww. The I said cat. Sherry. I said X Sherry and 12 year on C. Okay. And I, I, I know I said X Sherry. I think I said 10. Okay. I think. Sherry 14. Sherry 14. Okay. So guys, for not drinking scotch, you guys are freaking killing this. So this is Glen Farkless 12. So it's a space side. It's exclusively matured in Sherry casks. Uh, so, uh, how about your rolls? You got it right on the head. X Sherry and 12 years old. And you got, and everybody else, you know, guessed at least the cask and was pretty close for the age. But um, this one uses more, it doesn't say that it does, but it uses more uh, second fill or just not first fill Sherry casks. Um, I'll just show you real quick. So, like, this is Glendronic 12. So, it's the same, the same. Uh, age but it's super dark so this one uses more like first fill uh casks and this one is more refill casks it's a little bit lighter it's not really nice. showing up on the screen but, but yeah so you guys did really well with that for me that was yeah. by far my favorite mine yeah. too like i could buy a too. bottle of that and be totally fine drinking it yeah you guys were you guys all pretty much liked this I would say the only thing that put B ahead of it for me was that the B had so much sweetness. And again, somebody mentioned in the chat that Americans like their sweetness. So like I'm like super American and <clears throat> the, C, <laughs> the C had like a, a little bit of a weird bitter mid palate note, not the first note, but the second note before it went beautiful at the end there's a just a, a slightly bitter note that's the only reason i put it in second place yeah so uh this is uh the glenn farkless 12 is uh ex european oak and then klein leash is mostly ex bourbon uh white american oak uh it does have a little bit of sherry but yeah sometimes i get a little bit of a bitter note on um i don't know if it's the european oak or or what but 
Um, yeah, the only bummer with Glenn Farkless 12 is that uh, it is a little bit flat on the palette. But if you go for, like, Glendronic 12, uh, if you guys like Glenn Farkless 12, Glendronic 12 is, like, worlds above. Um, I should have poured you guys this. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's way better, way richer, and has a way uh, better kind of texture on the palette. But, yeah. What was the price on C? Oh, yeah, I forgot to tell you guys. Okay, so Klein Leash, uh, so B was $70, about 70 bucks. Dang. Um, and then C, uh, Glenn Farkless was, it's about $45. So it Ooh. is it is cheaper than Glendronic. Glendronic's, I think, around like 60. But for another 15 bucks, I think it's worth it to get that. But yeah, about 45 bucks. And for a 12-year um, malt, that's, that's not too bad. So Now, what is, hold on. So you said that, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm interested in the one that you keep pulling down. Oh, yeah. Glen, the Glendronic. Yeah. And this you said it's 60 12. bucks? I think it's about 60 bucks. Yeah. I'm going to write um, that down. This one has way more sherry flavor. So it's kind of, it's Glenn Farkless 12, but way better. It's kind of like what you should have gotten from D, but didn't. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's got that really sweet, like raisins and dates, but you also get it on the palate and it's, it's really nice. So because I, I really like C, like I, I could go buy a bottle of it and drink it. So if you say okay. that one is this one, but better, I would be happy to do that because it's. Okay, well, let me give you a sample first before you hate me for buying a dollar I'm bottle. going <laughs> all in because I had to blame somebody. Okay, okay. <laughs> I ain't going to blame myself. Glendronic is a mix of uh, Pedro Jimenez and Oloroso Sherry Casks. So yeah, this one Ooh. I think is almost exclusively ex Oloroso Sherry Casks. Um, and yeah, that one's got a little bit of PX in it. So a little bit kind of sweeter, um, than, than this. And I think it uses first fill a lot more than, uh, Glenn Farkless does. So that would explain all the depth of color, right? I, yeah. it, it's kind of a weird thing to me. I don't know if, what the difference is between Oloroso and Pedro Jimenez. I've never had either Sherry just on its own, but uh -huh. I do find that I, I enjoy things finished in Pedro Jimenez casts more than Oloroso. More than Oloroso. Okay. Yeah. Um, I've got a little uh, thing here. Let me just pull it up. This is on my little tasting sheet. Uh, let me see if I can add it. So this is kind of a breakdown of like Oloroso and then uh, things you can get from Pedro Jimenez. They're pretty similar, um, but one of the main differences, I think, is like candied fruit um, on PX, so a little bit kind of sweeter and candied fruit. And then uh, Oloroso is a little bit drier, nuttier. Um, you still get some dried fruits, but not as much as uh, like a jammy kind of quality. So yeah, um, Tom Lawrence is in. I cross streams, just picked up Glen Morangy Signet in Kentucky Owl Rye Batch 4, yeah. Sadly, I haven't taken to bourbon yet. That dang corn. Well, hey, we're, we'll do a Scotch drinkers try bourbon one, <laughs> one of these days, so. Yeah, I, I love seeing stuff like that because I'm like that dang malt. I just don't <laughs> like it. So the fact that you know it, it exists on both sides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People struggle with with both, and they're kind of on the opposite ends of the spectrum in terms of like sweetness, you know. So yeah, mm -hmm. but it's kind of cool. Um, oh, so Eric okay, Wayne brought up a good point. Oh yes, what's up? Oh, perfect. Oh yeah, so he has a great. Uh, he just did a 10, 10 wines for bourbon drinkers or scotch drinkers. I can't remember. Uh, Oloroso is made from the Palomino grape. PX is made from Pedro Jimenez grape, and it is sweeter. There you go. Thanks, Eric. Dropping the knowledge. Um, so do you guys want to go to D? Let's go to the D. I'm on it. And I actually poured a little more after you said raisins and dates. And I wish that, like, I know it's blind and we're supposed to go over the tasting notes, but I kind of wish you'd said that because I really dig it. Yeah, I know. Um, I actually, I put this in in uh, last place, and I regret it now. Yeah. Because when you said I raisins and dates, place. my mind associates that with, like, Magnus Cigar Blend from the oh, Armagnac okay. finish. Um, but I said this is port finish and 13 years old, or port, port export barrels, 13. Okay. And then here, I'll put in kind of um, some kind of normal tasting notes for port. Um, I think I said sherry 12 years. Sherry 12. I thought you said. I no, you, you said, said port, port because I think I was the only one on that one that I said Sherry. Oh, okay. that's right. Yeah. Yeah. 
So port 12 years. Okay, port 12. And I think it's Sherry now, years? though. I said Sherry 14. Okay. And Chris, sorry, what did you say on this one? On D? I said uh, X port 13. Okay, so you're pretty dang close. This is Glenmore G Quinta Rubon. It's a port finished, 14 years old. So it's aged for 10 years in ex-bourbon barrels and then four years in ex-port pipes uh, from Portugal. So yeah, you guys are right on with the with the port. So yeah, yeah I, I like this one. I put this one third. I, I like this one. Yeah. This was the one that I just the nose on this is my favorite. I think my favorite nose out of all of them by far. Yep. But then the palate, it just it the nose did not translate to the palate. It was its yeah. own thing on the palate. Yeah. Maybe it's that my palate's loosening up after drinking five scotches. <laughs> but whenever I ranked this both times, the first time through and the last time through, I put it last place, and that was a terrible mistake. Oh no, it's okay. I think I think um, you know when we were first having it, it hadn't really opened up yet. I feel like it is getting a little bit sweeter. So I think kind of the longer you let it sit, the more the the palate translates to kind of what you get on the nose. So yeah. I'm but, sticking but yeah. with it. I think it, it, I get so much the malt. I don't know. It's so, mm -hmm. it's it, the things that I don't like about scotch, I'm getting on the palate for that one. Yeah. And it's just totally off putting. Yeah. Which is absolutely crazy to me because of how much I love the nose yeah. on it. Yeah. I just, no, but I that's, like that's good to know. There's so much going on with it. Yeah. It just, it, 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 this is, this is yeah, one of it, my it, seven it, scotches I own. It intrigues me like so much that I just, as, as I keep drinking it, I keep pulling more stuff out of it. Yeah. So Mark Slinger says, try the Tomatin 14 pork cask. So the first one you guys had that you guys liked, but was young, uh, was the Tomatin. So yeah, if you kind of mix the, I think you guys, it seems like you guys like, uh, the Sherry one, uh, you all pretty much like C. So I think, a sherry finished uh, scotch or a completely sherry matured scotch uh, like Glendronic 12 would probably be a good a good one. But yeah, Tomat and Pork Cask maybe would it would give you the non-maltiness that you like on Tomat and, but the sweetness that you get on D um, might be a good balance. So yeah. Does Glenmorangie have a sherry finished? Yeah, they have uh, the Losanto. The Losanto? Yep. Yeah, it's uh, uh, two, two years in uh, sherry and 10 years in X bourbon barrels uh that would be a really good one too it's got the raisins and dates um and kind of that sweetness um and i think it comes up on the palate as well so trev yeah, do you feel like that. this is a bit of a setup stream the the like shayla and hbr like talking like actual bottle names and shit like oh yeah it's just is this a <laughs> so it's funny because the title of this video is bourbon drinkers drink scotch and i do identify as a bourbon drinker now but i started drinking whiskey by itself with scotch and i started with oh, blended wow. scotch and i started like my dad got me a few that were single malts and i didn't love the single malts i just love like chevis regal doers monkey shoulder like the super sweet yeah. blended scotches uh but i still have like um Glen Kinchy is my favorite scotch, and oh, I have a bottle of that always. And okay. then I have um, Lagavulin 16, um, Quinta Rubin. I have, I believe, I have a Lasanta, um, but I also have like um, I have a Glen. No, I'm sorry, McAllen 18. But that's oh, like okay. my dad got me that just like as a celebration bottle, and. I never open it. So yes, oh, wow. I was able to say those names, but only because I've literally had my hands on them. Like, I don't know anything about most of the other ones that were mentioned. The Glendronic, I've never had one of those that I'm aware of. Okay. So DC says, did you put the classic Lottie in this flight? No, I didn't. It, so it says it's unpeated, but it has, I think between five and 10 parts per million peat. And I think it's delicious, but I was just a little bit afraid that maybe the guys wouldn't like it. Um, but I will do it on the next one because I, I think they're going to enjoy it. Now that I know kind of what they what they like, I think they'll they'll dig it. So we'll do it on the next one for sure. 
Is the is the the classic Lottie? Is that the is that that blue bottle? Yep. Yeah, this guy. Sure, Kitty, you're not wrong. me off. You look at that bottle, and I don't know what to expect with it, but I I'm sure it doesn't taste what I'm expecting it to taste like. So I'm going to expect it to taste like hypnotic. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. It like hypnotic bottle. <laughs> so it's uh, almost exclusively this one is almost exclusively ex bourbon cask matured. Um, so it's probably something you guys would like. It's kind of right up your alley with um, you guys like B, um, and it's. It's different than B, but it's really tasty. I think you guys would enjoy it. So, yeah. The new ones, though, by Adam Hannett have a lot more wine cask finishing in them, um, which some people are not a fan of. Um, so this is an old bottling from uh, back when Jim McCune was a master distiller. He used more expert in cask. So hmm. uh, with the Sherry Love, they might. Yeah. So, yeah. Klein has already tried a Bonohaven 12, and he knows he likes it. That is um, X Sherry. So. We're picking up the theme here. <laughs> the ones you guys like have a little bit of sherry in them at least, so that's good. Bona 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 heaven. Yeah, well, I do love know, bona. What I think it is probably is just, you know, being bourbon drinkers, we love the sweetness of bourbon and throwing some sherry in the scotch. It reminds you of, of a bourbon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that positive affect transfer. Okay, so do you guys want to go on to E? See what yep. you Yes. Okay, so uh, HBR, what did you guess for E? I said X bourbon, and I said 18. Can I change that, or do I have to sure. say Sure. I haven't given you the answer yet. So I'm going to say X bourbon 14. Okay, X bourbon 14. All right. I believe I said X bourbon 12. Okay. That's, that's what I said, too. X bourbon 12? Okay. Yeah. All right. The last bottle, guys. So this is Highland Park 12. So this is the Island Whiskey. It's made on the Isle of Orkney. It's the most northerly distillery in Scotland. Um, it's 40% ABV, which I feel like, maybe just because of the peat, I feel like it seems a little bit higher than 40%. Um, yeah. But this is actually ex-sherry cask matured. I think it also uses a ton of refill casks so that you're not getting mm. as much kind of sherryness. They're, they're reused. Um, quite a few times, I think, before this goes into it. Um, but the reason I did this and not another Isla is because it's 20% peated malt. So they peat their own malt and they can only do about 20% of their own peat. Uh, and then they source the other 80% of their malt and it's unpeated. So it's got a little bit of peat in there. I just wanted to see if maybe you guys would like it. I know you've tried some heavy peated stuff, but I thought I just wanted to see if you did like it, then it was, you know, we'd go down a different trail, but <laughs> yeah. Not for me. <laughs> not for, not for not any the of the trail you I'm going down. <laughs> okay. So good to know. I won't give you guys any peated stuff uh, for quite a while. I'll give you more X sherry and X bourbon uh, stuff. So, <laughs> you know, what's weird though. Like I've had, and I'm, I'm sure it's totally different, but I've had peated bourbon and I love it. So I don't know if it's the combination of peat with just single malt that creates this weird rubbery thing. I don't know. So you've had it like uh, like the casks were used to hold peated whiskey or something? or No, like I, I think they, I don't know how they did it. Like uh -huh. the, the local distillery of mine, they had a peated bourbon. And oh, I think wow. they, I don't know what they, what, I think they took the, the barley that's in the bourbon, they peated it and then okay. just did everything else gotcha. like their typical bourbon. Oh, cool. Okay. But would it be you know, potentially, Shayla, would it be potentially that there's just such a smaller percentage of barley in a bourbon that the peat wouldn't overtake it? Yeah. If they're, if they're only using like 10 or 15% and then they're peating it and then it, depending on their production. So it depends on how much they peat it. It might be very lightly peated to begin with. And then once you like produce it and mash it and, you know, ferment it and distill it, a lot of that gets stripped away. Um, so, you know, people say like, Oh, this is 40 parts per million. And it's like, well, that's the phenol content before it ever gets, you know, produced. Um, so yeah. Hey, you, Trev, are you sure it was bourbon and not American whiskey? It was actual bourbon that was, peated? it was, it, it was, it was bourbon. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, it's probably just such a small percentage, like probably lightly peated or, you know, maybe even medium peated, but it's only 10 or 15% of the total mash. So, and you get a lot of that corn sweetness so that might, you know, kind yeah. of help 
balance things out. So from from yeah. what I recall, I asked the girl at the distillery, like every it was weird. Like every time I went in there, that's all I would order. Like I yeah. love that stuff. <laughs> oh, cool. And I was like, what? How is it? Pete, I, you know, I don't understand Pete and all that stuff. And she said, you know, they they peat the malt or they get peated malted barley yeah. Yeah. and then they just make their bourbon with it. So, wow, that's cool. Yeah, I wonder how much they use. That would be kind of a, a curious To thing. me, I got a lot. Like to me, I was like, man, this is pretty dang smoky. But I'm sure to someone who's used to, you know, heavily peated stuff, they're probably like, ah, eh, there's hardly anything on that. Oh, okay. But I don't know. To me, even this one, I mean, that's a lot to me. This Highland me, Park. Yeah. Yeah. I, for me, it's not a lot, um, but I drink peated stuff. So it's, you know, that makes sense. Um, but yeah, I was hoping it wouldn't kind of rip your guys' face off. But <laughs> so, explain, explain to me why, like, if I'm going to drink a peated scotch, I want it to be off the charts with peat. I want it yeah. to be like, like, blow me up give me every single bit that you can get yeah. because that's where i get the meatiness and the and yeah, like the savory um, kinda. yeah i get more of a savory meaty sort of note yeah and when, it, when it's only lightly peated it just comes off as as wrong sour yucky yeah. <laughs> sour yucky yeah i think you know with something like this you might get a little more um kind of that ash finish that you were talking about so you probably would like something like uh, Port Charlotte 10 year heavily peated. This is the, it's Octomore's like baby brother basically. <laughs> um, and I do get a lot of like a smoked kind of meat uh, thing from that. And that is a way, way higher peat. Um, oh my gosh, Aquavite just sent in a super chat. Great evangelism, Shayla. <laughs> You've been gentle this time. Great job from the panel. Impressive palettes for sure. They are, they have some of the best palettes in the game here. Uh, next time, take them to Southern Isla. Oh, dear. <laughs> I don't think we'll do that because they don't like the Highland Park. But <laughs> maybe as a punishment dram for wh whoever loses or something. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, so what did you guys think of the of the whole experience? Would you would you recommend that other bourbon drinkers do this? Would you do it again? Honestly, like I was expecting way worse. Okay. I wasn't expecting to find any of them that I liked. And honestly, like I might go buy a bottle of C or just take your word completely and go get that Glendronic. But okay. And if you don't was like actually it, pretty good. You can just give me the bottle and I'll give you $60. <laughs> no, I'm going to drink all of it. And okay. as I die, it's your fault. I seriously think you guys would really like uh Glendronic 12 for sure. Um, that would be, one I think you guys would enjoy. Um, maybe Aberfeldy 12 as well, or like an Aberfeldy 16. Um, those are ex-bourbon and ex-sherry, but there's quite a bit of sherry in there, and it's kind of a nice balance, and it's super sweet, super honeyed. Um, and then, yeah, like a Bonahaven 12, like an unpeated Isla that's sherried, um, something like that. So at least you guys have maybe a general idea, and if you guys ever go to the liquor store and you know, want to pick something up, you might, you might like that. So, so to answer your question, I would say yes. And yes. Um, I, I would do this again. And this is something fun to do for bourbon drinkers for sure. Um, what I get from doing things like this is not necessarily what I'm going to go out and buy bottle wise for myself, yeah. but I know there's a lot of people that come over and visit that like scotches. So if I'm going to have a scotch, I'm going to have one that I can at least tolerate. Right. And yeah. so I find, you know, from doing this and sampling and trying different things, well, I, I may not love this one, but I can drink it. And if somebody comes over that's a scotch drinker and is like, hey, let's have some scotch together, then at least I've got a few bottles on hand that I can can drink with them. I, I cannot see my palate transitioning over to be a scotch drinker. I'm just too much of a fat kid that loves his sweetness. <laughs> um, but... It's nice. It's nice to have this experience to be able to say I do like this and and I can appreciate where it comes from. Yeah, that's cool. What about you, Chris? I thought it was great. So, <clears throat> like I said, I I tried to get into scotch before I got into bourbon, and I really like the light, sweet stuff. And I think that's probably why I gravitate more towards bourbon. But seeing the the variation is was crazy. Like, and it's so 
interesting. Like in, in bourbon, you have Texas bourbon, you have Kentucky bourbon, Tennessee bourbon that have very wildly ranging flavors. But Scotland's such a smaller country, and across the different regions, there's even more variation of flavor. Yeah. Yeah. So it's all right. It's it's really eye opening to me. It's almost daunting to a certain extent. Like I don't, I've not thought this hard about a flight <laughs> ever. <laughs> so pulling all of the delicate tasting notes out and trying to be really open minded about it was almost exhausting. Like it was really cool to do. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I'm when so glad you guys it, did it. When, when oh, you sorry. put it that way, Chris, it. it it's something that I, I've thought about too, is just how small that country is. Those countries over there, are the size of states. So how they, you know, Kentucky bourbon, I feel like they're, it's kind of, I, there's differences, but they're all relatively similar. But then like you go to Texas and it's freaking a totally different beast. The fact yeah. that they can achieve these wildly different flavors and they're like oh yeah well i'm a highland and you're a lowland well yeah you're also like a hundred miles away <laughs> you know so it, it's weird it's it kind of i don't really understand how they do that so i think what you're saying is we probably need to to go over to scotland and just and just check it out i mean <laughs> great idea do let's do Plan it a bourbon trip to scotland bourbon yeah. drinkers explore scotland there we go there we go i think uh i think aqua Vita would probably show us show us around it would be it would be fun but destination yeah. scotland there we go yes a little anthony bourdain-esque we'll do it on your channel <laughs> i'll dye my mullet red we'll go oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome uh scotland is only slightly larger than california um but only has one eighth of the population. Yeah, there's there's hundreds of uh, Scotch distilleries in Scotland. It's pretty crazy. But um, but yeah, and I also forgot that you guys liked this Kleinleash 14. So this was a coastal highland. Um, so you know you guys could get something like that too. You both you all seem to like it quite a bit. So and it does have a little bit of sherry. It's mostly ex bourbon though. So yeah, I think you know sherry Scotch at least 12 years old is probably kind of where we're going. Oh and. Uh, one thing with the Glendronic 12. So it's owned by Brown Foreman. Oh, how crazy. Uh, that might be why you guys like it. Who knows? Wait, which, what number was that? Uh, Glendronic 12. No, it, that wasn't the try. one. Oh, okay. That's, we didn't taste that one. Okay. Yeah, you guys tried uh, Glen yeah. Farkless. Yeah, but this is one I think you guys would like. But it's owned by Brown Foreman. And uh, it's non-colored, non-chill filtered, and uh, usually higher ABV. This one's 43%, but I think they get higher the higher you go, um, like 46 um, but sadly, they're going to start uh, dropping this down and chill filtering it. So you, you should pick it up now before Why? it gets a little. I don't know. <laughs> well, who ever says we should chill filter? So Brown, Brown Foreman, Foreman, you know, this is their entry level, and it's forty three percent non chill filtered, and so they're going to drop it down to forty percent, which means that they need to chill filter it. So they're just trying to make more money by cutting Long it with way. water, so they have to chill filter it. But yeah. I think that's Great. what's going to happen. I don't know. It'll probably take a while, but. So those, uh, that space side in Lowland that you sent me the information on. Yeah. Um, I, one of the things I think I like the best about those is the, uh, proof. Yes. Yeah. So getting so, a, getting a 60%, you know, 120 proof scotch is really like the way to go. I mean, yeah. that's, that's how it should be. Yeah. These, these, 40%, 43%. I mean, adding those extra proof points really changes it big time. Yeah. yeah. So if you guys don't know, Klein uh, got a Scotch Malt Whiskey Society bottling. Um, I can't remember what the distillery was. I think it was Strathclyde. Um, yep. So it was a single grain uh, bottling or not a single grain. Oh, no. Yeah, it's just from Strathclyde. So, yeah, single grain bottling. Um, and that was what he enjoyed. Uh, so a little bit of like a lowland style. So you might like a Glen Kinchy cause Glen Kinchy is lowland, but again, it's only 43%, but, but yeah, it's so much better when you have a cast strength, uh, bottling. So yeah, an independent bottling of Klein Leash where it's like, you know, 50, 60%, you guys would probably really enjoy a uh, higher bottling of Glendronic or, uh, I'll send you guys some other sherried ones. So you guys can, if you guys feel like buying any scotch, you have at least some ideas, but yeah, what's up, Chris? Sorry. So the single grain, 
Yeah. Does that mean it's all barley, but not pot still? Uh, no. So single malt uh, has to be pot stilled. Uh, single grain does not have to be pot stilled. Um, at least I'm 99% I'm sure on that. If people want to correct me in chat, go ahead. But uh, it means that it's not malted barley. So it means it's from a single distillery and not uh, malted barley. So they'll use like wheat or rye or, or okay. maize, other things. So, yeah. <laughs> Adriana says, got to raise your hand like you mean it, Chris. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> That's awesome. Mrs. Fram, Mrs. Fram. Carlo, Carlo Max says, uh, single grain is usually corn or wheat. Yeah, I know that there's one distillery that's starting to do a rye. Um, it's in the malt whiskey yearbook. It's the one with um, the hammer mill and the filter. I can't remember the freaking name of it. Aquavita was just talking about it, but a single grain can be malt if it's from a column still. Okay, thank you, Eric, for the for the correction. Appreciate it. Um, it's so confusing. Like I, yeah, I'm gonna make a video about all the like uh, read, you know, all the kind of classifications and stuff. But it does get confusing. I think especially. Well, it can be if it's from a column still. Did you use a column still? Like, <laughs> what is going on? Yeah. So, but it's it's good because at least when you when you have single malt, you know that it's from a single distillery, 100% malted barley, and made with uh, a pot still. So it's like it's nice to know those things. But yeah, it does get kind of confusing with all the uh, classifications. So, and you can tell because I didn't even know. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, you said that in the email. I was just looking it up. You said that the. Um, the brands that Strathclyde does for bottling, most are from Caden Heads. Yep. Yeah. So Caden Heads is an independent bottling. So uh, like Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, uh, Douglas Lane, Caden Heads, um, those are independent bottlers. So it's um, it's kind of like an MGP thing, you know, where you you get the whiskey from another distillery and then you do your own thing to it and then you bottle it under your own label. So. Douglas Lane is its own label. Caden Heads is its own label, and it gets whiskey from a ton of different places. So, so like Barrel Bourbon. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah, it's got its label, Douglas Lane, and then it gets it from Klein Leash or Glen Warren G, and it blends it, does what it wants to it. If it's a single malt, obviously they're not going to. They're just going to get it from Strathclyde, and then instead of cutting it, they're going to you know just bottle it at cast strength. Lovely cast strength. So. You you also <laughs> said that uh, that Strathclyde's are generally used in blends. Is that because they're so sweet that people want to blend them? I mean, I I loved it how it was. Yeah. So um, a lot of the times, so like when you have blended Scotch whiskey, there's going to be a grain component and then a malt component. So you have grain is your main component, and then you kind of bring in single malt flavors from the malt. So you have the sweetness of the grain and then you kind of layer um, kind of flavors over the top of it. Um, so yeah, when you have a blended Scotch whiskey, it's gonna have grain in it. And so that's why it's used mostly for for blends because it's one of the grain distilleries that, you know, can, can produce for all of these people that are trying to make blended uh, Scotch whiskey, so. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah, so. Okay, I hope this wasn't like too much of a. This probably was too much information <laughs> in one video. No, it's great. So. No, I okay. love it. I feel awesome. like we were the only ones who didn't know everything. Everyone in the chat's like, "Oh yeah, they just they know every. They're just chiming in too." Adding yeah, everybody's. Bit. Yeah, we have a, a definitely a knowledgeable crowd. That's for sure. So the, the stream should say Shayla and three dummies. <laughs> no, 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 no. If you three guys, morons drink scotch. No, no, you guys. If this was, I mean, I know you guys have had scotch before, but if this was one of my first kind of like full on scotch tastings, um, I would not have gotten the notes and been as on as you guys were. So mm -hmm. you guys are great and have great palates. So. Well, you're Thank great you for sending us the whiskey and thank you very That's much. Good. For making us look good by sending easy to guess whiskeys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no problem. I'll do it again. But um, not that it, not no, that it matters, I, but who won? Oh, um. I, I wasn't keeping track. Well, of course, I kept track, and okay. it was clearly me. Um, <laughs> I knew Chris it. Chris was actually disqualified because he was a former whiskey drinker. Okay. And then, and then I just won. Okay. Yeah. I think you guys all got, like, points, though. I mean, you guys guessed the share. You guys guessed the port. Um, 
and yeah, you did the ex bourbon non age stated. You guys all said low age, so you guys were all pretty pretty dang close to I don't know to all of them. So you guys did great, but um, so yeah, we're gonna do this again, guys. There's gonna be another episode of Bourbon Drinker Try Scotch at some point with Julie. Like I sent her a bunch of samples, and yeah, hopefully wait. she hopefully she loves them. Uh, she probably won't, but we're just gonna see how it goes. So. <laughs> But thank you guys so much for being on. Um, and I can't wait to do this again with you guys. And I'm so glad that you guys didn't hate all of these. <laughs> no, it, it was it was a lot of fun. I really appreciate you taking the time to set it up, get everything sent out to us, do all this stuff. This this type of stuff, I think, is it, it not just crosses over channels, but it crosses over whiskeys. And it's it's absolutely perfect for for what everybody needs in the community. So great job. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Clyde. Yeah, it was awesome. Uh, and again, I applaud you for finding one that I actually like. So <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, you haven't converted have me it. though. I know, not fully. The next flight, I think, will be a, a, a full on, a full blown conversion because I'm gonna, I'm gonna send you guys some hitters, <laughs> and now I know what you guys like uh, generally. So yeah, it's gonna be good. I definitely like hitters. <laughs> okay, guys. We're an hour and 40 minutes in. I'm going to freaking shut, shut her down. I'm going to shut her down. Thank you to everybody that sent in Super Chats. Really super duper appreciate it. Thanks, Aquavite and Eric Wait for just dropping the knowledge bombs and being awesome. So I love you all so much. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend. And I will see you guys. Oh, I won't see you guys next week because I'll be traveling. Um, but I'll see. Oh, John DeLuca's. Hold on, guys. John DeLuca's. You just put one in. This is a shining example of how whiskey brings people together from all over the world. Oh, and he's from the Netherlands, so we know what's up. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it's so cool because I like to review scotch and bourbon, and I like to. I'm glad that we're getting to kind of mix, um, and you guys can try some new stuff. So yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna end the stream. Love you guys. I won't see you next week because I'll be traveling, and I'll see you the week after that for something. Who knows? All right.